But now trying to tell us what to do, get the hell out of here. Young Turks. Welcome to the Yellow Brick Road. I am Jordan, and today I'm going to talk about Jenk and Anna's endorsements for the 2020 primary thingy. Yeah. But first, please consider donating to Devin's Journey to Recover. The GoFundMe link is in the description box. Click that link, read the story, check out the other donations. None of the money goes to us, it goes to them. It's a charity. And you can help one of our subscribers and his wife out, help them pay medical bills at Devin's Journey to Recover. The GoFundMe link is in the description box. All right. So, as you guys probably know by now, uh, Anna and Jenk made their. Uh, primary nominee endorsements. Uh, Anna picked. I'm officially endorsing Senator Bernie Sanders as the Democratic nominee for president. And Jenk picked. And it, we have the great honor of having two giant progressives in this race. Having said that, I endorse Bernie Sanders. Now, neither of those should come as a surprise to you. I mean, I think some of the dumb dumbs are going to say, oh, Jenk was going to endorse Warren the whole time. He can't for credibility's sake. He has to endorse Bernie Sanders over Elizabeth Warren for just for just on credibility's sake. And he probably likes her more, li probably likes Bernie more than Elizabeth Warren. But if he is a corrupt shill, establishment shill, that's, yeah, it's possible. But even that show would have to pick Bernie Sanders just to save face for anything else. Now, uh, Jenk went over a whole thing. They both went over a whole thing of why they're picking Bernie Sanders. Uh, some of it sounds credible. Other other parts of it, it's like, okay, you know, like he's, like Jenk says, uh, oh, Bernie's the only one to challenge uh Hillary Clinton and blah, 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 blah. This is crunch time. This is when it matters most. Uh, and when no one had the courage to go after Hillary Clinton in 2016, he raised his hand and said, I'll do it. And it's like uh, Mike Gravel challenged Biden, Clinton, and Obama at the same time. So then why are you here tonight? Shouldn't debates be for candidates who are in the race to win the race? Ryan. You're right, I made that statement. But that's before I had a chance to stand with them a couple, three times. It's like going into the Senate. You know, the first time you get there, you're all excited. My God, how did I ever get here? Then about six months later, you say, how the hell did the rest of them get here? <laughs> you know, and, and I got to tell you, after standing up with them, some of these people frighten me. They frighten me. When, when you have mainline candidates that turn around and say that there's nothing off the table with respect to Iran, that's code for using nukes nuclear devices. I got to tell you, I'm president of the United States. There will be no preemptive wars with nuclear devices. To my mind, it's immoral and it's been immoral for the last 50 years as part of American foreign policy. Let's you Maybe the young Turks weren't around to endorse him then or they didn't have or maybe they didn't have the clout to do it, but that guy's did that. In fact, Mike Gravel ran in this race. He ran in this primary race and didn't get the support he needed to make the debates or to be considered in the race. Uh, it seems like someone with, you know, a network like TYT could have, you know, helped him out. You also have someone like uh, Tulsi Gabbard, who's been endorsed by uh, Mike Gravel, along with Bernie, who, you know, for some reason, these guys that call themselves progressives always like these types always leave out foreign policy when it comes to a progressive agenda you would think if you want all these social programs at home you might want to cut down that military budget and have a reason to do it right just like that video i did about the homeless uh p insurance companies putting homeless in housing to lower the cost of paying for their medical bills and all that shit it's like Sometimes when you try to do the right thing, it just seems to work out. It's very weird. So if you, you know, try not to bomb poor people around the world or starve them out or with sanctions, 
or you know coups of their gov of their democratically elected leaders like we're seeing in South America it's like sometimes you know just happens to work out to where you save money enough to pay for your own social programs it's very weird I would love to see more coverage of that on TYT you know <laughs> but yet yeah, so okay they did their endorsement thing they gave their reasons why uh, of course Jank is going to just like uh, Bernie's been carrying Warren most of the time Jank will also carry Warren to make sure every time he's like all these good things about Bernie make sure Warren's added into the conversation because she's, she's right there real close to her real close to Bernie right just a smidget less progressive Meanwhile, once again, you had Mike Gravel running in this race. You have Tulsi Gabbard running in this race. Very weird. But, uh, all right, so this is, let's call this overtime. This is what they talk about after. And it's a very interesting argument Shank makes. So, guys, we, we just both endorsed uh, Bernie Sanders. It was a hard decision for me because I do believe, and no one will move me off of it, that Elizabeth Warren is an honest wonderful, uh, true progressive, and maybe the smartest person I've ever seen in politics. So once again, he's using progressive as a, like a trademark, like it's a, uh, it's a brand name, right? She's a truly wonderful progressive. Like that's like a wink to his audience. That means she's good. It's like, once again, Gravel, Tulsi, you guys could have helped him out, I would think, but, you know. Uh, so, at the end of the day, I went with Bernie because I think he's been at this longer, and, and for all the reasons I just explained, right? And, and he's a rock, and maybe the, the GOAT, G-O-A-T, the greatest of all time. I still have Gravel over Bernie Sanders. Okay, so it's no, it's no diss on Elizabeth Warren to say, yeah, but he's Muhammad Ali. Okay, uh, now. Uh, maybe he's like, uh, Frazier? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to compare them because I don't look at these politicians like that anyways. I'm the GOAT. Vote for me. Fuck Bernie Sanders. Vote for Jordan. I'm the GOAT. Oh, a lot of folks are saying, okay, now we could, should attack one another, Warren and Sanders. Terrible idea. So I don't know if you got the memo. Joe Biden's still leading by six points in the national polls. Against Warren, he's leading by 10 against Bernie Sanders. In Iowa, in the last poll, Pete Buttigieg has now taken the lead. Pete Buttigieg. So that's, his, that's the argument that I wanted to focus on. You shouldn't attack Elizabeth Warren. Our Bernie supporters and Warren supporters should not be attacking each other. They should be focused on Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg. Now, the audience that he's talking to probably feel like we did away with those guys already. Every time I look on social media and Joe Biden does something, they're like, fuck you, Joe. Fuck you. Like, that's where they're hearing about Joe Biden uh, fucking up. That's where they're hearing about uh, Pete Buttigieg's probably centrist uh, ideology. That's where they're hearing that. The people that are picking those two are probably not all over social media like that and probably not watching you, Jenk Uger. Right? Biden's fans are probably watching CNN right now as we speak or watching MSNBC or something like that. Right? So if you're telling... So these fans on, like, Twitter, mostly where you'll see the fighting at. On Twitter, when you see the Warren, or the Bernie people, it's mainly Bernie people knocking down Elizabeth Warren. It's because they feel like these guys are done away with. I don't see anyone on this uh, social media thing talking about how great Biden is or how great Mayor Pete is. Not really. There's probably a little bit, some Mayor Pete people out there. But there's usually someone there to counter them in their replies like, <laughs> Mayor Pete fucking sucks. Or Mayor Pete is like this on this policy. Here's a better p 
policy to replace his shitty one. So those guys are like, only one left is Warren. In their minds. To some degree, at least. Right? They think Kamala's done with. And it seems to show in the polls as well. A lot of people on these Twitter on Twitter and social media don't trust the polls. They're like, there's no fucking way this guy's leading. What's going on there? Oh, here's Jordan Sheridan with 30 straight tweets about how they oversample older voters. <laughs> what's what's CNN's average viewer age? 60 plus? How, much, how about MSNBC? 60 plus. Same goes with Fox News, by the way. So they're, they're not in the realm of reaching those guys. Those older voters that are going to pick someone like Joe Biden are in a one-way conversation. It's from TV to mind. It isn't, here's information. Okay, let me ask a question about it. Oh, there's feedback. Okay, here's my feedback. And on it, and there is no conversation going on. It's TV to mind. TV just washing over them. So, so to, once again, I'm trying to give them like maybe what's going on with the psychology of people on these social media platforms. They go after Warren because they see her as a large step down from Bernie Sanders. And to be honest, I don't think they're that far off. And they have very good reason to shit on Warren. But you seem to, I don't know, carry water for her. I guess that's the expression. Carry water. Which is why they look at you and they say, who funds this guy? Why is this guy saying this and ignoring someone like Tulsi Gabbard? What about Mike Gravel? He had a chance to be in these races. Or at, the least, or at least be in the debate stage. To fucking, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> they haven't patched that out yet. Jesus, sorry, got distracted. <laughs> he tapped in more ways than one. <laughs> he fucking did like the pin off a grenade. Like, <sighs> anyways. Sorry, James is playing some guy online and he fucking quit when he got fucking KO'd. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. These people, that are, they're not worried about Biden or Buttigieg or anyone. They're worried about Warren because they see people like you hoisting her up right next to Bernie Sanders. Right? You're saying she's just a smidget different than Bernie Sanders, and people are like, no, look at this, here's the evidence. They're on Twitter all day saying, here's the evidence, here's the evidence. Here's Warren saying this. Here's Warren doing that. And they have the evidence, you don't. You just say, she's wonderful, lovely, and she's a progressive. That's all you say. You had to wait for her to come out with a Medicare for All plan, or payment plan, because you didn't have the credibility beforehand. So why were you fucking hoisting her up when she didn't have that out yet? When she was just riding the coattails of Bernie Sanders. And not even answering the questions that if you're for the Medicare for all policy, you should know this answer. You should know if taxes will go up for the middle class or not. <sighs> yeah, that's probably it for me. Uh, I mean, these guys, they shouldn't, it's just looking at it, once again, using dumb guy logic, like, are these guys throwing foreign policy out the window as something to be progressive on? Like, you can bomb people, but as long as you, as long as you're for Medicare for all, you're, you're a progressive? Is that what that means? Or were they told to stay away from something like foreign policy? That's a business you don't cross. You know, sort of like the MLK thing where it's like, oh, civil rights, good, good, good. Are you going to complain about Vietnam now? Okay. Uh, might have to get rid of this guy. I mean, I have to ask the question because when someone's been by far better than 
all these fucking candidates running, excluding Gravel, on foreign policy, like the human, uh, someone focusing on the human cost of things, well, not as much as I would like, but to some degree, at least bringing it up, uh, Julian Assange, I mean, come on. They they brought up uh, Bernie's like oh he's come on he's the he's the candidate doing this and they talk they talked about Bolivia and they talked about uh, Lula in Brazil it's so, like that's like what all within this month as opposed to this person that's been talking about this the whole fucking time I'm still flabbergasted about the Gravel point it's like. That guy actually ran in this race. Oh, and he went toe-to-toe with them before, too? And just shit, it up, like, just shit on them in front of them. Like, yeah, you guys are going to do this. You guys are corrupt assholes. He didn't say this with this language, but he actually did that shit. We have, like, we didn't, we have the internet. We know that shit's there. And the guy runs again. You give him, what? <laughs> At least he didn't quit yet. Yet. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's it for me. What else could I say? Please subscribe if you feel like. Comment. Agree. Disagree. Send me information. Maybe they were selling Gravel as much as they sell Warren. Maybe they're just looking at poll numbers and saying, like, Warren's pretty close, so we have to prop her up as well. I, I wouldn't know why. Maybe... Maybe Jenk doesn't realize he plays a role in how maybe people vote in polls. You know? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe he doesn't know if he has an impact or not on how elections move. I hear a lot of people using these guys' arguments when it comes to something like voting for Hillary Clinton in 2016. A lot of him, a lot of Cedar. I hear a lot of those arguments. I think they're batshit for those arguments. I'll just say they're wrong. They're crazy in this one specific in this specific area. They are dipshits. But eh, I don't know. Send me something that'll uh, ease my ease my mind a bit. Uh, also, don't forget to donate Devin's Journey to Recovery GoFundMe link in the description box. Please donate, not to us, but to a charity. Please donate. And with all that said, give this video. A thumbs down. Say you wanna get him.